Lesson 6.1 are angles and their measure. So this is a little bit of a review of how we draw and label angles. So an angle is two rays drawn with a common vertex or starting point. And standard position of an angle is an angle where we call the initial side on the positive x-axis. A positive angle rotates in the counterclockwise direction versus a negative angle rotates in the clockwise direction. And a quadrantal angle is an angle whose terminal side or ending side ends on one of the axes, so something like this. A central angle is a positive angle whose vertex is at the center of a circle, so something like this here inside of a circle, um, and that part of the circumference that is subtended by that central angle, we call that arc length. We can find that by multiplying the radius by the central angle measured in radians. And a radian is an angle measurement based on how many radii can fit around an arc um, subtended by a central angle. So essentially, it's another measurement for angle measurements. Um, so one revolution we know is 360 degrees. It's also two pi radians, because two pi radii can fit all the way around a circle. So we have a new measurement for angles, um, and we use them because they're considered a non-unit. So they're nice in math and science, so we don't have to end up canceling out units. So for example, if we want to convert 60 degrees into um, radians, we can use this conversion factor, or also the fact that if I divide both of these by 2, we know that 180 degrees is the same thing as pi radians. So if I convert 60 degrees into radians, then I'm just going to multiply by pi radians and divide by 180 degrees to cancel off those um, degrees. And so when I convert, my degrees cancel, and I end up with 60 divided by 180 is 3, so I end up with pi over 3 radians. And you don't actually have to write a unit for radians. That's the nice thing about radians. If you write just pi over 3, it's implied that it's radians. I can also go the other direction. So if I want to convert pi over 6 radians into degrees, I can use the same idea. So if I multiply pi over 6 radians by 180 degrees divided by pi radians, the radians cancel, which you don't even actually have to do because it's a non-unit, but the pi's cancel and you end up with 30 degrees. Make sure when you, your answer is degrees, you write degrees, because if you don't, it's implying radians. So go ahead and pause the video and convert negative 45 degrees and 107 degrees into radians, and negative 3 pi over 2 and 3 radians into degrees. So if I want to convert negative 45 degrees into radians, I multiplied it by pi radians over 180 degrees and got negative pi over 4. And then 107 degrees, same thing. I end up with 107 pi over 180, which a lot of times we'll leave it like that, or every once in a while you'll see it written as 1.867 radians. Going the other direction, if I want to convert negative 3 pi over 2 radians into degrees, I get negative 207 degree, 270 degrees. And 3 radians into degrees multiply again by 180 degrees over pi radians. I end up with 540 over pi degrees or 171.887 degrees. So converting back and forth, keeping in mind that 360 degrees is equivalent to 2 pi radians or 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians. So lesson 6.2 is trig functions in the unit circle. So this is the unit circle, which is a circle with a radius of 1. And these are specific angle measurements around a circle that we remember to help us with our trig functions that we're going to be talking about in a moment. We're going to want to have this memorized, but we want to remember the patterns that go along with it. So first off, we always start in the positive x-axis. So we start here at 0 degrees or 0 radians, and we move around counterclockwise. Anything that's always closer to the x-axis is always going to be an over 6 radian. In the middle is always going to be your over 4 radians, and in the Closer to the y-axis is going to be your over 3 radians. Um, closest sitting on the x-axis is 0, and then all the way across is 180 degrees or pi. At the top is pi over 2 or 90 degrees, and then at the bottom is 3 pi over 2 or 270. Coming back around, you get 2 pi or 360 degrees. So for the radian measurements, it always goes over 6, over 4, over 3, and then coming back around the same pattern. For the numerators in your first quadrant, it's always just pi, or 1 pi. In the second quadrant, your numerator is always 1 less than your denominator, so 2 over 3, 3 over 4, 5 over 6. In the third quadrant, it's always 1 more, 7 over 6, 5 over 4, 4 over 3. And then in the fourth quadrant, either you can add across, so 5 plus 6 is 11, 
3 plus 4 is 7. Or it's twice the denominator minus 1, because you've gone almost all the way around the circle, but you have one less pi over 6 that you haven't gone yet. And then the x and y coordinates for your quadrantal angles are 0, 1, or negative 1, depending on what side you're on. And then for your, the rest of them, they're either 1 over 2, root 2 over 2, or root 3 over 2. So if you're closest to the x-axis, your x-coordinate's going to be bigger than your y-coordinate, so root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. If you're closer to the y-axis, your y-coordinate's going to be bigger than your x-coordinate, so 1 half, comma root 3 over 2. And if you're in the middle, they're both in the middle, so root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. And then the only difference as you go around the four quadrants is that in the first quadrant, they're both positive. The second quadrant, it's negative positive. In the third quadrant, they're both negative. And then the fourth quadrant, they're positive negative. So we want to remember the patterns as you go across, not 49 different pieces of information. Now we're going to talk about the six trig functions. And we talked a little bit about this in geometry, sine, cosine, and tangent in a side triangles. We're going to talk about them a little bit more generally as functions themselves first, before we get specific into triangles. So we have our point P, which is going to be some point x, y, and a radius of r on our circle. So we have the three ones that we talked about in geometry. We have three more, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So sine of theta, we always use this Greek letter theta. We always need something inside of your trig function. So sine of your angle is always the y-coordinate divided by the radius. Cosine of your angle is the x-coordinate divided by your radius. Tangent of the angle is your y-coordinate divided by your x-coordinate. And then as you move across, these three are just reciprocals of the first three. So cotangent is x over y, secant is r over x, and cosecant is r over y. And then just a reminder that when you're on the unit circle, the radius is 1. So we can use that unit circle to help us evaluate these trig functions. So if we look at theta to be 0, we want to find the value of all six of our trig functions at that angle measurement. So if I look at my unit circle, the coordinate point at theta equals 0 is 1, 0. And I'm on the unit circle, which means my radius is 1. So sine of 0 is y over r, which means it's going to be 0 over 1, which is 0. Cosine of 0 is x over r, which means it's going to be 1 over 1, which is 1. Tangent of 0 is y over x, which means it's going to be 0 over 1, which is 0. Cotangent of 0 is the reciprocal of that x over y, which means it's 1 over 0, which is not possible, so that is undefined. Secant of 0 is r over x, which is 1 over 1 or 1. Cosecant of 0 is r over y, which is 1 over 0. Again, that is undefined. So plugging in the pieces for x, y, and r, and then evaluating them based on those trig functions. So same idea if I want the six trig functions for theta to be pi over 2. The coordinate point is 0, 1, and my radius is 1. So sine of pi over 2 is going to be 1 over 1 or 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is going to be 0 over 1 or 0. Tangent of pi over 2 is going to be 1 over 0 or undefined. Cotangent of pi over 2 is going to be 0 over 1, which is 0. Secant of pi over 2 is going to be 1 over 0, which is undefined. And cosecant of pi over 2 is going to be 1 over 1, which is 1. Similar ideas for theta equals pi and th theta equals 3 pi over 2. Um, these ones have some negative ones in there because the x for pi and the y for 3 pi over 2 are negative 1. So what we notice is for the quadrantal angles, these are the four quadrantal angles because they lie on the four axes, your answers are either going to be 0, plus or minus 1, or undefined. So now here are two that are not on the quadrantal angles, but go ahead and pause the video and use your unit circle to evaluate the six trig functions for these two. For 2 pi over 3, the coordinate point is negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2, and it's on the unit circle, so your radius is 1. So then filling in the ratio for sine, which is y over r, you get root 3 over 2 over 1, so just root 3 over 2. Cosine of 2 pi over 3, x over r, negative 1 half over 1, so negative 1 half. Tangent of 2 pi over 3 is y over x, so you get root 3 over 2 over negative 1 half, which is negative root 3. Cotangent of 2 pi over 3, x over y, negative 1 half over root 3 over 2 is negative 1 over root 3, or if you rationalize it, negative root 3 over 3. Secant of 2 pi over 3, r over x, 1 over negative 1 half is negative 2. And cosecant of 2 pi over 3, r over y, 1 over root 3 over 2 is 2 over root 3, or 2 root 3 over 3 if you rationalize it. 
For theta is 7 pi over 4, the coordinate point is root 2 over 2 comma negative root 2 over 2. Again, radius of 1. So sine of 7 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. Cosine of 7 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Tangent of 7 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, so negative 1. Cotangent of 7 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2 over negative root 2 over 2, so negative 1. Secant of 7 pi over 4 is 1 over root 2 over 2, so 2 over root 2, or just root 2. And cosecant of 7 pi over 4 is 1 over negative root 2 over 2, so negative 2 over root 2, or negative root 2. So evaluating these trig functions, figure out what your coordinate point is. If it's on the unit circle, your radius is 1, and then filling in the ratios for the six trig functions. For these ones, they're just looking for one specific ratio. Notice that some of these are negative angles, which means you're rotating clockwise instead of counterclockwise, and some of these are bigger than 2 pi. So those still exist, we just have to figure out where they are. So go ahead and pause the video and try these ones. So for the first one, 135 is at negative root 2 over 2 root 2 over 2, so sine is y over r, you end up with just root 2 over 2. Negative pi over 4 means I want to go clockwise pi over 4 instead of going all the way around. So I want to find the one that I know on the unit circle that's in the same location. So it shares the same location with 7 pi over 4, which means it shares the same coordinate point as 7 pi over 4, root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. So the cosine of negative pi over 4 is going to be equivalent to the cosine of 7 pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2. 5 pi over 3 is at 1 half negative root, two over, root 3 over 2. You want tangent, so y over x, you end up with negative root 3. Negative 5 pi over 6, same thing. I want to go clockwise 5 pi over 6, so I end up in the third quadrant. It's going to share a location with 7 pi over 6. So the secant of 7 pi over 6, negative root 3 over 2, 1 half, I end up with negative 2 over root 3 or negative 2 root 3 over 3. For the ones that are bigger than 2 pi, that means they're going all the way around the circle and they keep going. So 8 pi over 3 would go all the way around the circle once, which would be 6 pi over 3, and then it goes another 2 pi over 3. So it shares the same location as just regular 2 pi over 3, negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So the cosine of 8 pi over 3 is equivalent to the cosine of 2 pi over 3, which is negative 1 half. Similarly, with 13 pi over 4, I go all the way around the circle once. That would be 8 pi over 4, and then I go another 5 pi over 4. So I'd end up down here in the fourth quadrant, or excuse me, the third quadrant, negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. And so cosecant is r over y, so I end up with negative 2 over root 2 or negative root 2. So with the clockwise ones, the negative angles, or the more than 2 pi ones, you have to figure out where it shares the same location with the ones that we know from the unit circle. You can take these trig functions, evaluate them, and then do arithmetic with them. So for example, the sine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 180 degrees, I would evaluate each of those individually and then multiply them together. So go ahead and pause the video and try that. So for the first one, the sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. The cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1, so you end up with negative root 2 over 2. The tangent of pi over 4 would be root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, which is 1. The sine of 3 pi over 4 is 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so you end up with 1 minus a negative 1, which is 2. The secant of pi over 4 would be 1 over root 2 over 2. The cosecant of pi over 2 would be 1 over 1, so you end up with root 2 quantity squared plus 1, which is 3. Our calculator will also do trig functions. There are the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons on all scientific or graphing calculators. You just have to be careful because you have to make sure you're in the correct mode. So the calculator does differentiate between degree mode and radian mode. For the graphing calculators, you go to mode and change between them. For the scientific calculators, there's usually some sort of like DRG button where you can switch between them. So try using your graphing calculator or scientific calculator to evaluate these two. For the first one, make sure you're in degree mode and then just type in cosine of 48 into your calculator and you end up with 0 0.669. For the second one, make sure you're in radian mode, to plug in tangent of pi over 12 and you get 0 0.267. So make sure you're in the correct mode. Um, at this point, if these are not on the unit circle, which neither of these two are, the only way we can evaluate them is using a calculator. The last part is evaluating our trig functions when something is not on the unit circle. So for this first example, they tell us that we have an angle whose terminal side goes through the point 4 comma negative 3. So it goes through this point 4 comma negative 3, and we want to evaluate all six trig functions. Well, we know the ratios of our trig functions using x, y, and r. So the only thing we have to do is we have to figure out we know x and y. We have to figure out what r is. So we can treat this like a right triangle. So we know that this leg is going to be 4, 
this leg is going to be 3, and then we can find our radius using Pythagorean theorem. So we end up with a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, so our radius is going to be 3. So now we know x, y, and r, and we can evaluate all six trig functions. So using the ratio, sine is y over r, so negative 3 fifths, cosine is x over r, so 4 fifths, tangent is y over x, so negative 3 over 4, cotangent is x over y, so 4 over negative 3, secant is r over x, so 5 over 4, and cosecant is r over y, so 5 over negative 3. So we don't actually know what the angle measurement is. We never found that, but we can figure out what the ratios still are. So if we don't know that it's on the unit circle, you have to find the radius in order to evaluate. So try this last one. It goes to the point negative 5, 12, and we want to find all six trig functions. So negative 5, 12 is the second quadrant, and I use Pythagorean theorem to find that the radius is going to be 13. It's a 5, 12, 13 triangle. And then I evaluate each of the six trig functions. So sine of theta is 12 over 13. Cosine of theta is negative 5 over 13. Tangent of theta is 12 over negative 5. Cotangent of theta is negative 5 over 12. Secant of theta is 13 over negative 5. And cosecant of theta is 13 over 12. So make sure that we know our six trig function ratios and our unit circle and be able to evaluate those ratios based on the unit circle as well as points that are not on the unit circle.